recovery systems. It's our pleasure to work with many fine clinics across Asia Pacific and today we're in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam and it's our pleasure to be at Maple Healthcare and Steve Brandel. G'day Steve. Tell us about uh, Maple Healthcare and a little bit about the services offered here. Okay, so Maple Healthcare, we are a brand existing since uh, more than five years in Vietnam. We have now three clinics. We gonna focus on healthcare, as the name is uh, Our main focus is chiropractic care, but my focus, my work here is uh, combined decongestive therapy, basically the treatment of lymphedema. Right. So with decongestive therapy, that and the the symptom is swelling in many cases, isn't it? Yes, decongestive. I want to reduce the swelling, so yep. we're going to talk about symptoms of swelling. It's right. quite it's the right wording. Swelling is a symptom and not a disease. In, indeed. Uh, so, what sort of conditions cause swelling? There are many conditions causing swelling. Um, I think most people know the swelling of the ankles after a long day sitting in the office which is usually a venous swelling, the venous insufficiency or in some cases varicose veins. Yep. And so another common issue is the lymphedema after breast cancer surgery, where nowadays uh, almost everybody has a neighbor got a surgery and uh, most of the patients there, yep. about 30% get a severe lymphedema. Some, there are some other diseases like kidney. Um, the kidney usually filtrates the water and minerals from from the blood yep. and if your kidney is deceased you can get some swellings but yep. they are uh, not really treatable with any treatment you need to fix the kidney yep. uh, that's Abs the most important thing. Absolutely, it's diabetes as well that can cause swelling and it can cause and swelling and yeah, healing impairments yep. and yeah, many All other right. things. So intermittent compression therapy yeah. uh, it has been used as a part of the treatment protocol. Can you talk us through some of the use cases for that and, and also if you're able some of, uh, some of the outcomes that you've seen in, in different situations? Two main kinds of edema we distinguish. One is dynamic insufficiency. Dynamic means our heart usually pumps blood out to the tissue to bring nutrients there and the venous system takes up the metabolic end products, the waste products, and bring it back to the body center, which is um, the dynamic right. flow. And if in this dynamic flow I have an influence and disturbance, which is usually coming from the venous system, I call it a dynamic insufficiency. Right. And these are usually the swellings I have after a long day of sitting in the flight, yep. in the office. Maybe um, athletes as well have that, yes. Athletes as well, for yeah. sure, overpowering. Yeah. They're using a lot of blood, a lot of oxygen, a lot yeah. of nutrients, and a lot of blood means also a lot of fluid, yeah. which is not always easy to get back to the body center, right. to the heart. So this um, dynamic insufficiency is the first part. The second is the mechanic insufficiency, yeah. which it's a kind of treatment I focus on, which is usually happening after cancer surgeries, right. where I damage the lymphatic system. Right. So, so the body can't keep up with the yes. With so the, the lymphatic the system usually, when I our body transfers blood to the tissue and takes it back, uh, about one to ten percent of this filtrated fluid gonna drain back by the lymphatic system. Right. Um, once I have a disease of a mechanic insufficiency, my body, for example, surgery breast cancer, can't take out the fluid from the arm. Right. About 1 to 10 percent of my normal fluid can't flow back. Right. For a while, my body might can compensate it over months or years, but this fluid starts to build up, build up, step yeah. by step, build up, build up, and can't flow back without any kind of treatment. Right. This is the mechanic insufficiency. Okay. Yes. Lymphedema can be in the legs, can be in the arms, can be even in your face. Right. Or um, also, actually, genital cancer can be the genital. Right. So lymphedema can be everywhere in the body. Yeah. So what's the role of uh, IPC or intermittent compression therapy? In, in helping to reduce or manage the amount of fluid uh, in an arm or in, in a limb, because typically arms, sometimes legs, or yeah. maybe even elsewhere. What's the role of intermittent compression? Okay, the role, uh, so that's why I distinguish the two parts. If I have a dynamic in, insufficiency, yep. um, I'm going to have a problem with the venous system. To treat this kind of issue, in this we have this IPC, and in these dynamic insufficiencies, 
the IPC can be the only treatment or an addition to a compression stocking and we're gonna basically pump out all the fluid, all the waste products out of the tissue stimulating the uh, supply with new nutrients, stimulating healing you know, just kind of pump out all the waste, all the fluid. Right, so that's a great step forward to get the, the patient back to um, a healthy lifestyle again.